uh, I just want to say that before we start, can I request everybody to mute uh, themselves? Uh, and what we will do is I will take you through a short presentation and then I'll open it up for discussion where you Hi, where you can type your questions in or uh, you know, uh, we can have a discussion after that. So for now, could everybody mute yourselves? Uh, I just want to make sure that you can see the screen. Okay, so I'd like to start. Um, thanks everybody for logging on. Uh, yeah, if we can go to that slide. Mm. Today really what I want to talk about is uh, a lot of you are coming back into the workplace after a gap uh, or you may not be coming back, you may be in the workplace and wondering whether a gap will affect you. And really what I want to talk about today is how do you, um, how do you create a persona for yourself that is, makes you a success. Uh, you know, as a leader. And what's your story? Each one of us is an individual. Uh, imagine yourself as a storybook. And there are different chapters in your life. And each chapter contributes to the theme of that story, to the entire story. The first thing I realize that we all tend to do as somebody who has taken a break from the workplace is we think, oh, this chapter is a useless chapter. Uh, I, you know, this whole section where I have taken off from work uh, is makes, puts me at a disadvantage, it is of no use to me and it is a handicap. But just like in a book, every chapter has meaning and relevance to the entire story. So every aspect of your life, whether it is that you have taken a break, whether you are coming back into a different field, whether you uh, are unable to do the hours that you used to do, uh, every chapter in your life contributes to your overall story. So the first thing is to say that, every, to recognize that every chapter has meaning and it is for us to derive the meaning from every chapter. So I'd like to introduce myself to you by telling you my story first uh, to help me explain how this has gone. Can we just move to the next slide? Um, for me, the mind has been fascinating. What is in the mind? What? How do we file everything that we have in our minds? Uh, you know, what are the uh, chapters that we have in there? What are the titles that we have in there? Uh, and, and it's always been about the mind. So if you go to the next slide, um, my uh, story or my journey has been quite broken. I started by studying psychology and English literature. Um, I, I wasn't somebody who scored well. I was never going to get admission into the sciences or medicine or engineering. Um, they, it wasn't interesting for me. English literature was, psychology was. It, it, was a, it was a combination that I had to take when I studied psychology and English literature. Um, and after that I went into advertising and marketing. I spent uh, almost 20 years in advertising and marketing. And um, I used to think, has my psychology uh, and has my English literature helped me in advertising and marketing? Uh, after 20 years in the field of advertising and marketing in corporate life, I worked with uh, JWT, which at that time was India's, uh, was the world's largest agency. Uh, from mass advertising, I moved into direct marketing. Uh, I then took a break because my son was two years old. I wasn't able to handle work and home. I thought I was doing a bad job at both places. Um, and so I went into advertising. I mean, I went into, uh, I left corporate life and uh, suddenly after being able to manage an entire office of people, I couldn't manage this one child. I found it difficult and so I said, okay, let me go back to understanding the mind and how does the child's mind develop. And so I joined parenting classes, uh, programs 
and then I became a parenting facilitator myself and then I started wondering how do we talk to ourselves if, if the child interprets things like this and so I studied hypnotherapy and you know uh, what does this have to do with psychology and English literature I remember somebody in my family saying oh I think she's got a new hobby and today I'm a coach uh, and I do leadership programs but just like any book there is a theme and it took me some time to figure out what was the theme uh, I used to have these doubts am I jumping from one thing to another uh, you know is there no purpose what is the purpose in my life am I doing the wrong thing am I, am I uh, heading in the right direction am I wasting my time what was I meant to do I had no great talent I couldn't you know sing or I couldn't draw so am I just jumping from one thing to the other but I did a lot of work and I realized that there is a theme and that theme if you can go to the next slide was all about facilitating expression uh, and, and that is really what if, if there's one more slide if you can go down uh, and that really is what this whole story was about facilitating expression because from understanding the mind my whole story was about how do we take in messages and how do those messages then express themselves I studied it in psychology I studied the input in psychology and how we express ourselves in English in advertising and marketing it was all about how do we uh, express ourselves creatively uh, in parenting and hypnotherapy I started helping people express themselves uh, I studied nonviolent communication I was helping my child express himself I was child helping other parents as a parent I was learning how to express myself in hypnotherapy I was understanding how we communicate with ourselves and how that affects um, you know how uh, uh, we express ourselves and today as a coach and a leader I help people be the best expression of themselves so my storyline my theme was facilitating expression just like that each one of you has a theme and a storyline and you may have different chapters and sometimes you may wonder whether those chapters make any sense but those chapters all contribute to that central theme and what's important is for you to recognize that so I'll take you through a little process which I believe few steps which I believe help people recognize what is their story and it's really about what is your story yeah so yeah go to the next slide there's S which stands for strength all of us need to know our strengths and I will take you through this in a little more detail but it's very important to understand what are my strengths which are over and beyond I'm hardworking and intelligent or I'm creative and strategic each one of us is completely unique and we have strengths that we don't sit and think about all our lives we sit and think about what I should do better what do I do badly that I need to improve you know um, in school unfortunately our teachers give us report cards which say is capable of doing much more can be better, has better potential and um, really what we want is for all of us to operate from strengths not from gaps we keep looking at ourselves from a point of view of gap uh, you know I think everybody on this session today is a woman and as women we actually have multiple strengths which men don't have we we are actually an awesome race I hope there are no I don't know whether there are men on this call but anyway <laughs> but basically women are awesome we have the ability to be empathetic we have sensitivity we are able to multitask we have stamina that uh, others don't have um, I mean it's huge it, there's so much more that we have yet we always seem to think of ourselves as lacking and we only think of ourselves from the point of view of lacking we keep talking about oh I need to do this I need to get better at this I'm not so good at this 
We never talk about our strengths. We don't even think about it. We believe it's boasting. But you have to operate from your strengths. So, I'll, and I'll come into how we discover your strengths. So, strengths is important. What's the theme of your story? There is something that makes you relevant to other people continuously. There is a feeling you leave behind. What is that theme which you have always brought to the table? That's what your strengths will lead you to. Opportunities. What are the opportunities I have to evolve, to grow, to learn? Even if I'm not working, if I'm sitting at home, if I'm planning my house, uh, if I'm planning work around my house, if I'm helping with the building society in, uh, you know, uh, garbage segregation, whatever I'm doing, there is something that is helping me to evolve and learn new things. And I need to make note of them. R is about being real, being authentic. If we keep pretending to be something we're not, we will never get anywhere. Uh, and why is about being you, about seeing yourself as a central theme and not being apologetic about who you are. So if we can go to the next slide, I'll go through each one of these in more detail. Yeah. So the first one is about your strengths. You know, when we are asked what are our strengths, we think about, oh, I'm disciplined, I am hardworking, I'm persevering. Oh, some of us say, yeah, I talk well or I draw well, uh, but there is more to your strength. And the first thing I want you to do, and I'd, and I'd like you all uh, to answer this question, and maybe you can uh, write it in the chat box, yeah, as you see them. There's two questions. What is it that gets you excited and why? So I'll give you an example. Yesterday I asked a colleague of mine this question, and she said, I love travel and I love fashion. That's what gets me excited. And I said, why? She said, because there's so much color and there's so much detail. And when we talked about it, we realized that that is what is her strength. She is a detail-oriented person who is very vivid and very, uh, you know, loves to go into detail in a very large and uh, vivid manner. And that turned out to be her strength. So I'm going to ask you all to take a minute and think about what gets you excited. So it can be anything. It can be running, jogging. So someone else I met said, food gets me excited. And I said, why? And they said, because there are so many different ingredients that go in. But what is the result of it is something so different from what goes in. And that is what I find exciting. I try to understand what is the input to figure out how you can change the output totally. So can you think about this for a minute, each of you, what gets you excited and why, and write it in the chat sheet. It can be jogging, talking to people, art, um, skipping, exercise, um, you know, um, planning, processes, dancing, whatever it is. What gets you excited and why? Can I see some answers on the uh, chat screen? Meeting people and painting. Your answer has to come with the why. Art because of colors, okay? Nina says art because of colors. Just happiness, dance, okay? Reading, because it gives me imagination already, okay? Meeting people to work and learn. Mathematics, because it's a brain exercise. Traveling, being gainfully employed, okay? Traveling, meeting people. Meeting people and traveling. A lot of travelers we have in this group. Different courses to gain knowledge. Okay. Ideas, exchanging with people, dancing makes me relax. 
okay talking to people gives me a chance to exchange ideas nice okay Okay, I think we've got quite a few there. So let me start going with um, programming by creating something. Okay, so now let's start. Okay, so let's take for example, um, traveling and being gainfully employed. Traveling and love to meet the different courses. Okay, so Arpita said different courses because I love to gain knowledge. Okay, so Arpita, uh, if you can just unmute, let me ask you a question. Um, are you somebody who uh, likes to keep learning? Yeah, I love to keep learning and okay. uh, attending different courses. Yeah. Oh. So, do you like to share that learning? Yeah, I do share it in the WhatsApp groups, whatever I learn okay. and uh, what are the courses. Which okay. are good. Yeah. Okay. So next time when somebody asks you what is your strength, you have to yeah. say, I'm the eternal student. I keep learning and absorbing new things. Okay. Does that make sense to you? Yeah. Okay. Great. <laughs> okay. Sri Ranjini. And and then you know what, Arpita, the other thing you have to do is you have to have examples. You have to say, This is what I did to help people learn. This is what I did. I did something simple from housework and I learned something which I can apply at work. Okay, okay. so you have to then start using your strength expanding. So Sri Ranjani said, I like, Sri Ranjani, can you um, uh, unmute? I hope I'm pronouncing your name right. So Sri Ranjani yes. said, I love dancing because it makes me relax, right? Uh, yes, Supya, yeah. Okay, so Sri Ranjani, are you somebody who is uh, calm or um, uh, what, what's your temperament like? Uh, yeah, like um, uh, when I, uh, I am a calm person as such, only in, only uh, like uh, I just get, um, uh, like the, I get my temper very rarely. It's okay, fun. so that yeah. means... Um, so let's take that as a strength. So one of your strengths is that you stay calm and it's very rare that you lose your head. Yeah. Right? So is that a strength yeah. that somebody would say of you? Uh, yeah, probably, yeah. <laughs> it is true of you, right? Okay. Yeah. So you have many strengths. I'm trying to get you to recognize the strengths that you have from the things that you love to do. Yeah, I'm trying to get all of you to look at your strengths from a different angle. Um, let me, uh, uh, thanks Ranjini. Uh, let me, um, who else is here, do we have, uh, Prerna. Prerna likes meeting people and painting. Prerna, can you unmute? Yes, sir, Prerna. Okay, so Prerna, I don't have a why from you. Why do you like meeting people and painting? I did put it, uh, put, uh, I think I got lost in the sea of responses, but I like meeting people and painting because both bring out emotions. For me, it's a very real thing to connect with people and with myself through emotions. Okay, so are you somebody who is sensitive and empathetic? Yes, I am. Okay, so is that a strength that you have? Yes, I would call it my strength. Very okay. rightly called it. Yeah. Is that a strength that you have normally talked about as a strength? Uh, yes, my work uh, allows me to talk, uh, I mean, uh, explore empathy in a deeper way. And okay. I do find that sensitive to people's emotions and my own as well. Okay, great. So, uh, thanks, uh, Perna. That let's just do one more person before uh, Meena. Meena, ideas exchange with people. Is that yeah. what you said? Right. Yes. So, yeah. So, Meena, are you like? Do you like? Are you like somebody who likes to learn, or you like to hear other perspectives? What is it? I like both of them, learning as oh. well as others' perspective. Okay. So, what is the strength that you bring to the table? Bringing out the best of mine and others too. Okay. So, it's about discovering new opinions and bringing out the best in others. 
helping people discover the best? Yes. Okay. Okay. Thanks a lot. So is, is this beginning to make sense to everybody? Your strengths, why am I looked at what excites you? Because we always look at things like dancing and reading and traveling as our hobbies. We never sit and take them seriously. But you have to look at your strengths from the things you enjoy doing the most. And when you think about what you enjoy doing the most, and you think about why you enjoy it, then you realize this is something that is intrinsic to me. This is true to me. And this is actually when, when I'm using this aspect of myself, when I'm using this strength, or when the job allows me to use it, then I flourish. I enjoy what I'm doing. And I do it really well. Okay? So when you are all looking at yourselves in the future or currently at a job or a resume or whatever you're looking at, when you go for an interview, look at the strengths and give real life examples of how you've used the strengths. Okay? And evolve these strengths. So the strengths should have evolved. So when you talk about yourself, you say, you know, in this in this job I was at this level with the strengths and I evolved. Or even though I was a, in a break from my career when I was staying at home and uh, just doing this or my hobby or whatever it is, it helped me evolve these strengths. So that's the section about strengths. The next one is the theme. Okay, so I have certain strengths. And you know, relate this to a book. A book, when you talk about a book and you say that was a really good book, why was it really good? Was it descriptive? What kind of style was it? It was descriptive or it was informative or it was reassuring or it gave me a different perspective or it was rejuvenating. There is different reasons why we like a book which and those, your strengths are the reasons. Those are the reasons, those are the descriptors, that is your style which is true to you. Then comes the theme which is how do you make people feel? How are you relevant? Okay, so if I am somebody who helps, um, who loves learning, like like we had the uh, Arpita uh, on here, and he said, "I love learning." Okay, and how does that help other people feel? How are you relevant to other people because you like learning? I give them new perspectives or I make them feel more informed. So who did we have who said I love learning? Was it Ar Arpita? Sorry, did I? Arpita, are you there? Okay, I think we Yeah, have. it was me, yeah. Right, so Arpita, so when you say I love, so I want to show the evolution of that, right? So your strength was that I love learning. Yeah. Okay, and I share learning as well. Yeah. Then comes your theme, which is how do I stay relevant whatever I do? Mm -hmm. It is I help people feel. So what kind of learning is, is it that you like to share? Do people feel more informed? Or do people feel like, oh, I got a new point of view? Or do people feel curious to know more? Or do people, you know, feel more aware? There is a yeah. feeling that you leave people with. Which one is that? They feel more informed about whatever. Or informed. Uh, okay, yeah. so, you, that, so that's the relevance you have. So which means whether you are talking to your spouse, friend, parent, team member, boss, client, mm -hmm. they have to leave feeling more informed by the end of a discussion with Arpita. So whenever you're in a in a confusion, how do I deal with the situation? Think about it this way. Mm -hmm. Look, my strength is in gaining knowledge, mm -hmm. and my relevance, my theme is I help people feel more informed. So that's how I'll handle it. Yeah. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. So thank you so um, much. Does somebody else want to uh, talk about uh, their theme? Let's see somebody who we haven't uh, spoken to. Uh, Clarice and Parsenta have the same 
uh, this thing, travel and meeting people. So what's your theme? What do people feel when they hear about your traveling or when they meet you because of travels? Clarice? Hello? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Prasenta. Yes. Okay, great. Am I spelling your, pronouncing your name right? Yeah, uh, this is uh, Prasanata. Yes. Prasanata. Yes. Okay. So you typed it wrong. Oh. Ah, okay. So Prasanata, yes. how does how does um, how do people feel as a result? What is the relevance that uh, to people because you love to meet people and travel? Yes, uh, when I meet the people and uh, actually I want to, uh, I love to and uh, talk to with them. Uh, so so uh, and and the uh, people give a positive response to me. Uh, and uh, and I give some uh, like uh, any 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 queries any problems uh, when I solve uh, it will be a grateful for me so um, okay so what I'm so, trying to understand is uh, presenter that um, you love to travel yes. You love to connect with people, yep. Right, and how do yep. people feel? People feel what? I want the feeling. Yeah, uh, people. Uh, uh, it was grateful uh, when, when we uh, strange people uh, where we don't have any connect uh, through the travel. So uh, it was uh, pe people uh, very very uh, give the very uh, positive response. Okay, so you're saying people feel uh, connected. Yes. Feel connected. Okay. So then that is your team that I help people feel connected, which means if I'm a team leader, I help people feel connected. If I'm working in the home, I help people feel connected. That's the team you bring to the table. Yeah? Uh, yeah yes. Thank you. Thank you, Prasada. Yeah. Uh, Ruchi, you. Ruchi, can we have you on? Talking to people gives me a chance to exchange ideas. So how does that help people feel? Hi, ma'am. Hi, who's that? Hi, this is Clarice. Oh, hi, Clarice. Okay. There was some wrong. Okay. Ah, so Clarice, you also talked about travel, right? Yes, ma'am. I love traveling and I love reading books. Okay. Uh, when I travel, ma'am, uh, I get to meet a lot of different people wow. and new people, and I can uh, see life from a different perspective. Okay. And I think this is what gets me charged up. Okay. okay, so you love to okay. so you love to have new experiences and yes, see life from different angles. Mm -hmm. So those are, that's your strength, right, Clarice? Yes, right. Okay. And so when now, I read, yeah. Uh, I don't know. It takes me to a different world, an imaginative world, and that is the other side. But uh, uh, the main point would be to uh, to gain knowledge. And when I talk to others, ma'am, I think I exchange this and I get their views. So there's a lot of uh, brainstorming going on. Okay, so, so I guess, hold on a second. Now, the first part, which is the strengths, is the I part. The yes. second part, which is the theme, is the you part. So how do you make people feel? How do others feel as a result I, of this? Uh, sometimes it is empowering. Sometimes it is... Uh, Enriching their knowledge. Okay. And uh, yes, ma'am, I think these are the main two okay. things. So if you say that my theme is I help people feel enriched and empowered. Yes, ma'am. Then you work on how do I use my strengths to bring that to the table in everything that I do. Okay, ma'am. Yes. Yeah. Mm. Okay. So I think we've got a general idea of how the theme works. Remember the strength is from an I perspective, what makes me tick, what's exciting to me and what do I love. And the theme is about how am I relevant to the rest of the world, how do people feel. And if I am aware of these two totally, then I will be able to go through all of the chapters in my storybook easily and excited. 
I will be able to say, okay, look, this is not getting me, not using the strengths that I have. And maybe therefore it's not the opportunity for me or I am not using the strengths that I have and therefore it's not, I'm not doing a good job over here. And maybe I'm not having a good relationship with people around me because I'm not using my theme. I'm not staying relevant. So your strengths in your theme you have to be constantly aware of. Someone's not on mute. Can you uh, just check your mute buttons? The third thing is then about opportunity. You know, whether we are working in a large office, in a small office, whether we are at home looking after a child, uh, whether we have got married and then had to take a break, or for whatever reason, we have to see every experience in our life as an opportunity to have learned something new and to have evolved those strengths and to have practiced that theme. I know that when I quit working, I actually had two breaks in my career and my first break in my career, I did, I did nothing or I thought I did nothing. And I reflect back on those few years and I keep saying, oh, I wish I'd done more, wish I'd done more, I did nothing, I did nothing, I did nothing. And actually it wasn't true because every person I met, every experience I had, every place, every um, place I went to was helping me evolve to get to the next stage of my life. So it doesn't matter what you are doing. Please see yourself as using that, everything that you do as an opportunity which you will bring to all of the other things that you do. Oh. And if you have to keep evolving, look for opportunities to evolve. You know, one of the things I've said in my interview is that I really wish I had done more programs, weekend workshops, joined a book club, oh, you know, joined a film appreciation club, I don't know, gone, done yoga with a group in the morning, whatever it is that makes you tick, started writing a blog something that would help me interact with people and would not and would help me feel useful and relevant to the rest of the world. So keep looking for opportunities. Don't say, oh I took a break and you know nothing happened, I haven't moved. You've moved. You have to go back and review how you've moved and how all of the experience you, experiences you have have added new dimensions to yourself. The third, the fourth one is be real. This is really, really critical. I feel this is the most important aspect. If you are not true to yourself, if you are pretending to be something that you are not, it will not last. The strongest people today, the most successful leaders are those who have been authentic and true to themselves. Because when you are true to yourself, it is so easy to keep on behaving in that manner. And when I say be authentic, I don't mean be stagnant. Don't say I'm like this only, so you have to get used to me. You know, I'm short-tempered and so I'm like that. That's not what I mean. I mean that if learning, if for example, if learning excites you, then keep learning. Keep sharing that in an authentic manner. Uh, because if you are not somebody who likes communicating with people, find different ways of connecting. But don't start thinking that public speaking class and you know, if I go and talk to somebody every day it will help me. Because you can only sustain it for three months. Pretending you can only sustain for two to three months before it becomes erratic. So being real, be authentic, be true to yourself is really important. And to be true to yourself, you have to know yourself. You have to think about it. Somebody the other day asked me, but how do I know what are my strengths and you know how, what is really me? And I said, listen to people around you. Understand what people are saying. Hey, uh, you know, call Supriya. She'll help us with this. She's always the one who does this, this, blah, blah, blah. You've heard that before. Call Pregna. She is the one who will be able to help us with this. You know, so those are the, 
different things that you have to look at. Listen to people, ask people and you know don't ask people for feedback because they think that the minute you say feedback they'll say oh you know what is wrong with you, you know how you have to improve like our school teachers and their report cards. Yeah, well, instead what you have to say is tell me what I'm doing well that I should continue to do. Tell me what I'm doing well that you think that you enjoy that helps you. And then you can say and what would you like me to change, that's feedback. And when you give feedback also, please give it like that. And finally, it's the you. You know, you are the centerpiece of your life. We're coming up on Women's Day. And uh, last year on Women's Day, I, I was a chief guest at a company and I had to give a speech. And, and the first thing I said, and I think it's there on my LinkedIn, uh, if you go in and read my blog, the first thing I said is, I mean, do not be apologetic for yourself. We walk around, you know, we have Mother's Day and everybody says, oh, I love my mother because she sacrificed so much. Why should we see ourselves in terms of sacrifice? We have to see ourselves in terms of contribution. If you took a break, don't see it as a sacrifice. See it as a contribution. See it as a strength. Be proud of it. Be proud of yourselves. That's the first thing. I was reading this uh, uh, book by Sheryl Sandberg and she talks about how we, you know, somebody says, oh, you're going to, uh, you got an award and we say, no, yeah, it was some useless award. Say, yeah, I got an award. Thank you. I rocked. That's the first thing. The second thing about you <coughs> is please don't think you're superwoman. We insist on doing everything and we insist on doing everything well. We can't do that. It's not possible. Okay? So if you need to outsource, if you're going back to work and you need to find a maid or you need to find a in-law or a grandparent or an aunt or a friend who will help you with looking after your kid, then do that. If you need to get a cook, figure out how you can do that. If you need your husband to sit and pitch in, figure out how you're going to get him to do that. Okay? But don't sit there and say, I will do everything by myself. It's not possible. You know, I saw um, a video the other day of Indra Nui. And she talks about how she said she said her secretary would handle her children's calls about TV viewing while she was in a meeting. You have to outsource and you have to figure out how to outsource and ask for help and if you ask for help you'll get it. But please don't think that you are superwoman and you can be perfect at everything. It's not possible. There are days when I'm a really good mom and there are days when I'm not such a good mom. And there are days when I'm really good at work and there are days when I'm not so good at work. And you know what? It's okay. That's the first thing you have to tell yourself, it's okay. I can't be 100% all the time because then I just really crash. But somehow as women we believe that we have to be 100% all of the time and we are not the center, The whole everybody else is the center. My husband, my child, my mother-in-law, my mother, my everybody else, my boss, my team, my peers, everybody else is the center and I'm not. So you have to start changing that angle. Walk in there with your head held high. Unapologetic. Look at your strengths as something that excites you. Look at that theme. What is it that you help people see? You know? And then come into everything is an opportunity. However bad a situation looks, it's an opportunity for me to evolve. It's not a failure, it is an opportunity for me to look at something else or an opportunity to evolve. And no pretense, be real. That doesn't mean that you don't learn or you don't change your ways. It means be true to yourself in as gentle a manner as possible. Um, 
So I think that kind of covers it. What's the next slide? I've forgotten, I've been so busy talking. Yeah, that really is what I want to end with, Brené Brown. You know, nowadays we are so lucky, there's so much of learning available on the internet um, that even if you are sitting at home doing nothing and worrying about whether you're going to rust before you get your next job, go to TED Talks, watch stuff, you know, uh, and remember that this story is yours, you have to write your story and you have to write it in present tense. Don't say, I will be good at my job or I will be, um, you know, uh, I will learn better next time or I will be more relaxed or I will contribute more. Say, I am doing it and look around you and see how you are doing it. Recognize your own story, that's the most important part. Most of the time, unfortunately, we are living everybody else's story. We are living our parents' story, what they wanted, what they wrote for us. We are living our spouse's story, what they think is ideal. We are living our children's story. We are living everybody else's story. And you know what? It's not everybody else's fault. It's our fault because we haven't sat down and said, said what is my story? Who am I? How do I rock? Because I rock. Each one of you rocks. Each one of you is awesome. You have to sit down, spend the time and say, how do I rock? How am I relevant to other people? How do I make people feel? And then where do I want to be and work towards it? Then we can say that if we own the story, we write the ending. Most of the time we don't own the story, we just run wherever the somebody else's writing takes us. And we keep running from not from chapter to chapter, one book to another book. So really that's what it's about, you know, each one of us has fabulous strengths and um, we, we really, really, really must look at our own strengths and it's not boasting, it's not bragging, it's being aware. It's being aware so that you can operate from your strengths, so that you enjoy what you're doing, so that you do what you're doing well. Not because um, of anything, but because if we keep concentrating on what we're not good at, life becomes so boring and so miserable. So I'm open to questions. Oh, I have some nice comments here. Thank you. <laughs> I'm open to questions. Yeah, so in case if anybody has a question, you can just type it in the chat box or unmute yourself and ask the question. There's complete silence that scares me no end. I know your speech was so good, Supriya, that uh, no, it, it was just a motherly advice and people have really connected is what I feel to every point that you shared and you know, it's the entire journey that they go through and yeah, people are just soaking into it. There, Prerna says the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Uh, any more questions, people? Hello? Yeah. Who's that? Hi, Supriya. This is Aisha here. I'm sorry, I didn't get your name. Hello? Yeah. Who's this? Yeah. This is Aisha. Hi, Aisha. Tell me. How can I help yeah. you? It was very nice listening to you once more. We got a chance to get motivated was very relaxing at the same time listening some things how to live in the family as well how to talk and stand in front of everyone and say our opinion it was very good right now like I'm an engineer and masters I have given a break I'm not getting a proper idea how to get started so uh, there's two things that I would suggest to everybody who wants to get started again, write your resume from a point of view of strengths. You know, I uh, posted two jobs on Jobs for Her uh, uh, three weeks ago and out of all the resumes I got, only two of them start, stated their strengths and their personality up front. Okay. Especially when you're coming back from a break, 
uh, your past employment plays a role, but I first want to hear this is the kind of person I am. This is what I bring to the table. Okay? Yes. So which means then that your job description will match that. And you, you, when you come for an interview, I'll look at it and I say, I, I see here you've written I'm an independent thinker. Give me an example. And then you will be able to talk about how you showed you were an independent thinker. Yeah? So one is when you write your resumes, please look at your resumes. Um, again, let me tell you, out of all the resumes I received, 30% had wrong phone numbers, wrong email IDs. Uh, another 20% had spelling mistakes. Uh, you know, uh, if, if there are huge jumps, then maybe explain it. Do an email and explain it. Have a conversation. So that's one thing I would like to say. The other thing is, write down what you want. Write down and think about what you want, what you are looking for. So let me tell you, so I'll go back to my example. When I uh, quit my job, I was in advertising. Every day I used to say, is this what my purpose in life is? I don't know. I thought I wanted to be a writer. So I joined a writing course. Anyway, that didn't work out and then I was sitting there and then I went through parenting. I, st I was a parent facilitator. Then I studied hypnotherapy and then I said, now I'm ready to go back to join work. What am I going to apply for? What role? Because I'm a psychology student who went into advertising, who has studied hypnotherapy and I don't know what I want to do. I don't want to do the job I want to do before. And if I get a job, I don't want to work full time. I want some freedom. So I wrote down what I want. And you know what I wanted? I said I want a job that gives me free time and helps me to meet lots of new people. And money was not an issue. I said, OK, I'm not interested in earning right now. I want to, I want to get back into the workforce. Three weeks later, or no, was it? Yeah, about a month later, an old colleague of mine who is a friend came to me and said, you know what, I'm being asked to do a workshop. Shall we do workshops together? And my persona was born. And guess what? I am meeting hundreds of new people every month from different organizations, different fields of life. And it, it was my business, so it was flexi time. I was able to work on my own time. I was able to say, OK, I don't have targets to run after. And I will build the business at my pace. It came into my hands. So you have to be clear what you want. Don't keep saying I want to get back to work. Because what does I want to get back to work mean? You know? That's what you have to figure out. First write down what you want. So for example, somebody may say I want a job that pays me well and is close to my house. Someone else will say I want a job that helps me to learn new things. But write down what you want. And then every day say thank you to the universe for sending it to you and it will come. OK, does that answer your question? <laughs> In some way. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> OK, I, it was I, very interesting to you. Thanks, yes, Aisha. I I'll, I'll just move to Anjali, who's listed a question here. Then during a, we get suggestions from all corners, and one thing drags you in different directions. So, Anjali, I think my response to you will be, whichever corner you're going, figure out whether you are operating from your strength in that corner. Okay, and if it is in a different direction, see whether you can use your theme and help people feel in a certain, the same way as your theme in whichever corner you're going. And if you're able to do that, then slowly it will all start coming into a space that is your own. See, 
people will all have many suggestions and you know keep telling you uh, do this do that do this do that keep going back to your strengths in your theme um is that it does that make sense to you anjali okay thank you anjali anybody else any questions uh, hi ma'am i'm shanta here hi shanta it's really good you know because i am very good at communications and you made very crystal clear i don't have any questions but i just wanted to share my opinion of your speech it's really good and you really inspired it as you know because as you i have taken two breaks uh, be it for the health reasons or uh, migrations or whatever reasons if they are but you know you at least gave us an initiative Uh, where do we start you know because normally we post resumes and out of frustrations we don't put our strengths or we don't say what is our core potentials or everything but that you gave us an idea with one of my other teammate who had actually asked what how do we initiate ourselves that was actually uh, one big uh, clue which uh, you know we, we till date most of us wondered why uh, our resumes are not selected despite of experiences despite of uh, any other things you know it's really good i should i i heartfully thank and i would say um, i know it's like uh, being mesmerized more than motivated <laughs> thank you because you are a hypnotist i think you uh, you you feel the pulse of uh, all of us and you know what uh, i was into development and eventually i went into business development and uh, as a functional consultant and today you know uh, just because you had been with various migrations i read lot of psycho psychology articles you know understanding why this did not work out with me why why is the questionnaire and today i got that same from another person who has been into psychology and with various yeah. uh, career fields and i'm glad i just take, took your email in case if there is uh, there are any uh, leadership programs or anything scheduled at hyderabad apparently most of the things kushali puts up are in bangalore and i can't leave uh, <laughs> my home and uh, yeah. join in bangalore because i have an elderly person to be taken care so these are the things you know <laughs> so i yeah. i would really touch with you if it's okay with you you know just wanted to put okay. a word yeah. my and the word Shanta. Yeah, and the word mesmerized really applies to you being a hypnotic. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, Anta. Thank you. And, and, and to all of you, yeah, please. My email is up there. Please message if you want. Uh, yeah. I have one more question here, which I'd like to answer if we have time. Uh, yes, please. Yeah, which is to Renuka. Uh, Renuka, and I, I love your question because. Um, Okay, I'll just read out Renuka's question. She says, "My story is quite similar to yours, except that the fields are different, and definitely, I'm not even remotely successful." Let me tell you: if you hear my uh, uh, what I earn, you won't think I'm remotely successful. So, successful is a very um, all of us have different versions for success. So, you know, it it really depends. Anyway. I just want to know a few tips on how to write a good resume for someone who is a jack of all trades. I love that question because I had the same question and I thought that I would I would never be successful because I said I'm a jack of all trades master of none. And I saw that the biggest drawback. Till I met somebody who said what do you want to do? And I said I want to write and I want to meet new people. And they said Thank God you are a jack of all trades because if you weren't a jack of all trades you wouldn't be able to talk to many people Definitely. and you wouldn't be able to write about different things so to be a jack of all trades is your strength today when i do workshops i am able to connect with different people and give them different perspectives all of which have meaning to them and it is only because i'm a jack of all trades and i'm not a specialist in any one field In fact I used to say my only specialization is that I can talk. What can I do with that? Yes, yeah, but today I have a I make a career out of it. And you all think I'm successful. So <laughs> it must be working, right? So, yeah, so
Right. So, Renuka, I want you to say, I want you to be proud of being a jack of all trades. And you, I want you to understand what is the advantage of being a jack of all trades. Yes, ma'am. And how does that apply to the work you do? And how does that, that apply to your theme? What is the relevance that you bring to the table? Because you are a jack of all trades and because you are not in a niche segment. Yes, ma'am. Yeah? Yeah, yes, ma'am. Hmm. Anand. Anand has written saying that uh, you're not getting your resume shortlisted. Okay. So the one thing I would say, Anand, is what I have been. Uh, is is that right, Anand Kanwa? Yeah. Again, I would say the first thing is please check your resume. Please check that all the data is correct, phone number, email, make sure that your strengths are mentioned. Not I'm hard working and intelligent, but what do I bring to the table? What is my passion? What do I love doing? I love learning or I love helping people feel that they can relax because I'm in charge of a situation. What is it that I love doing? What is the theme? What is my relevance to everybody? So first is check your uh, resume. The second is add your strengths and have relevant strengths. And the third is please apply to places that are relevant to you. Now I posted a job in Chennai and I had people from other parts of the country who were not going to travel to Chennai who applied. Why? You get it? So make sure that you're applying to the right jobs. And make sure that you have practiced what you will say in an interview. A lot of people go into an interview without practicing. You know, I do workshops all the time. I still practice. I still practice. I record myself. I tape myself. So please practice what you're going to say. This is my strength. How do I make it relevant? If this is uh, my relevance, then how will it be important for you in the organization? So if you want to get your resume list shortlisted, look at the data, make sure it's accurate. Mm, put your strengths in and apply to the right places. Ah, so okay. So Anand, you're looking at a online job also. Okay. I think I've answered most of the session, uh, questions. Yes. Oh, uh, and we are past time. You saying something? Sorry. No, I said we are. Uh, we have crossed our time, and I think there are no more questions coming. I think we must have loved spending that time with you, and it was really motivating. In fact, you connected cords at many, many times. The, the pointers that you shared, is, it's your life is your storybook. So read it after a while and go ahead with it. Along with that, the sacrifice versus the contribution factor is most of the time we end up saying that we sacrifice for this. But that was a very valuable point that you shared in. Uh, also, the point that you shared in was uh, write your own story. We've been always leaving the stories of what our family is, our friends around, and always working around to satisfy people on those lines, you know. But we have never lived up to ourselves. And that's a very valuable point that you shared. And I think most of them are really mesmerized, like Shanta said. <laughs> and Shanta will definitely come to Chennai for many events which will be coming up. Uh, so, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Shali, but I should uh, sorry, sorry for the interruption, you know, but I, I really found it very good, you know, because the last time I missed some of them. Yeah. We were, and you know, I, I wish she uh, does some uh, thing over within Hyderabad, you know, that's, that's my problem. Otherwise, I would have traveled long back to Chennai. Definitely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks. Send me your email and I'll keep you posted. Yeah. Sure, ma'am. Uh, so thank you, Supriya. Thanks, Kushali. It was really valuable. Uh, thank you so much for everyone for joining into the session. And I, I'm sure it has made a great uh, value add to 
what uh, pointer supriya shared and thank you so much for your time with this we'll thank you all up. have a good day yeah supriya go ahead so that's it i was just saying thank you all and have a good day and thank you for being so participative and interactive thanks much so you can log out now thank you so much thanks bye kushali bye bye supriya thank you Thank you.